Jake Barton is principal and founder of Local Projects, an experience exhibit design firm that creates groundbreaking experiences. Their work includes the National September 11th Memorial and Museum, the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, and the Cleveland Museum of Art. Jake joins us today from New York City to talk about engagement strategies from the cultural sector. And please be ready to use the Slido polling tool again as Jake will ask a question towards the end of his talk. Jake, thank you for being here. Over to you. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to be sharing today three strategies uh, that are engagement strategies from the cultural sector. And they'll allow us to understand how it is that we can apply some of the learnings, both from physical as well as digital technologies and innovations into your practice today. Local Projects is a multidisciplinary firm. It's the firm that I lead and we're doing work all around the world. Uh, but what makes us particularly unique is that we mix together physical design, uh, graphic motion and media design, as well as creative technology and content development and storytelling. Uh, that allows us to do projects like this. I'll get into this deeper, but this is the Cooper Hewitt, our National Design Museum here in America, where we have visitors learning about design by being designers themselves. At the heart of all of our work is emotion. So this is our project for the Cleveland Museum of Art, where as you make different faces, it will draw forward new works of art that connect with the same emotional state that you're able to share. Just one more example of a project that we just opened is the Planet Word Museum in Washington, DC. It's a museum of words and language, uh, where when you first enter into the museum, you see this enormous word wall. This sculpture represents a little under 1% of the English language. But it is a good representation of how we like to think about technology. And this is how I'd would recommend that you do as well. Not necessarily as a gizmo or as a transactional device, but as a metaphor. In this case, it's the world's first voice recognition museum. And it invites visitors to speak as well as to listen, to have dialogue and conversations with the institution itself. Meaning it has a big wow idea to it. Wow, that's amazing, you can speak to the museum. But much more important, we think, is the metaphor of it, is the invitation of it, is the meaning of it. And so that's what I wanna to talk to you about today is how essentially to create meaning and interaction and engagement through technology. Just to fill out a few more examples of Planet Word, in this case, the second gallery invites world languages with this massive globe in the middle of the space. And you have these very detailed interpersonal connections with people from around the world as they teach you your language. But we also developed this piece of technology that takes that globe and that actually condenses uh, that same piece into a kinetic sculpture that creates a chandelier allowing you to clear out all of the exhibitry below it and create a new rental space. So this is a good example of the multidisciplinary aspect of our studio where we connect together in that case robotics and sculpture to make new experiences. This is the, the literal as well as the figurative heart of the museum, a magical library that invites visitors to take a number of different recommended books and drop them down and see the books literally spill forth, uh, the worlds of the books spill forth. Or this last gallery that brings the metaphor again about painting with words to life. You can dip your paintbrush into any number of different vocabulary words and see those words spring to life in visual landscape terms. So again, there's three different things I want you to be thinking about today. The first uh, is inviting creativity. The second is how to turn storefronts into storyfronts. And the last is just turning customers into brand activists. Uh, so the first project I'd like to talk to you about uh, is this one, turn storefronts into storyfronts. This is a project that we did for the New York Times, where we took a local reporting bent that they have continuously invested in, but just recently reinvested in a very big way and transported visitors in the five boroughs of New York to enter into these worlds that they've created. 
So we took abandoned storefronts, rented them from short periods of time and created these optical illusion stories that allow visitors to drop inside of those local worlds. This is associated with an audio application that allows you to listen to oral histories about, in this case, educational inequality in the Bronx, or in earlier cases I was showing you about uh, incarceration rates in Brooklyn. And again, embedding these types of stories inside of these local areas brings a powerful message in terms of the New York Times and their commitment to local reporting, and in particular to spurring dialogue, something this unusual and almost paradoxically communal draws people together to have these conversations, in this case, about the red light districts in Queens that, that exist underneath the surface of life there, really brought together whole communities. And in fact, the individual New York Times reporters were hosting meet and greets in all of these different locations to engage with the community, to have dialogue with the community, and again, to underscore their commitment to making the local reporting as local as possible. So embedding those stories directly inside of the communities that they serve. The second piece that I really wanted to talk to you about, oh, and then this is a, a specialty item that we use with QR codes to invite dialogue. The second piece I wanted to talk to you about is this one, inviting creativity. Now I know there's been a lot of talk about how to essentially bring an interactive bent or a sense of dialogue or engagement directly to customers. But we want, or might ask you to take it a little bit farther and to actually invite them to be co-creators with your brand. And that I think is a little bit uh, odd if you might think it, uh, because you think about your brand as a place where you bring style to your customers, where you bring expertise, where you bring uh, a next experience that they want to be part of. But I think what I'd like to invite you to think about is a way to actually invite them to be the creators of that vision or that co-create. In this case, we invited visitors to our National Design Museum here in America, the Cooper Hewitt, to be designers themselves through an interactive pen. This was based on the mission of the institution, which is four words long, empower visitors through design. And we pitched the museum saying, well, visitors could collect inspiration, they could make their own designs, and that would lead them to want to hear much more from the collection and from designers, in this case, Frank Geary himself. The way the museum has worked for the last five years is that every visitor gets an interactive pen that allows them to do just that. So you can select all sorts of inspiration from around the museum. You can then use that inspiration and save it delving deeper into the collections. You can design your own architecture, your own fashion, your own uh, housewares and hospitality items, essentially handing over the vision of what a designer can do to its audience, allow the Cooper Hewitt not just to embody their mission, but most importantly, to make an incredibly sticky and inspirational series of experiences that invite visitors to be the author of design acumen, and that in turn make them appreciate much more the incredible paradigms of design that fill in this entire institution. This is an experience that invites visitors to see in their own body, in their own space, all the different parts of the collection. So as they're using your body and making different poses, it actually brings forward parts of the collection that connect directly with the pose that you're making. So again, putting visitors directly into an active role of authoring their own experience invites them to be much deeper in their involvement with the overall institution. And then lastly, this is what the New York Times calls the beating heart of the institution, an immersion room that invites visitors to draw their own forms of wallpaper and express their own forms of pattern. I'm very sure this is the world's first bacon and eggs wallpaper ever to be explored. The last piece that I'm gonna talk about is about turning customers into brand activists. And this is actually a, a project that we developed with a uh, a uh, group called Fashion for Good. I'm just going to play this first and I'm going to talk about it really quickly. You can go ahead and make sure the volume's on.
So I'll talk over this because I think the volume isn't playing. This is an overview that gives a sense of the lookbook of the experience, Fashion for Good. And this is an interesting organization because it's both a store as well as a museum experience, as well as a think tank incubator for new sustainable fashion technologies. Located in Amsterdam, it's part of a larger initiative to, to combat climate change by really fostering a sense of partnership between the apparel industry, fashion designers, and consumers in a brand new experience. Every visitor who comes gets this bracelet, which is made out of plastics that have been dredged literally out of the canals of Amsterdam and invites them not just to shop for objects or amazing fashion or apparel, but also behaviors. In this case, you make different pledges to make all sorts of changes to how you work as a consumer. And those pledges then become the platform for your new sustainable fashion approach. You can also employ a custom co-creation space where visitors can create new sustainable t-shirts that are printed on demand. It takes about three minutes literally to fabricate these on the spot and they're cradle to cradle in terms of uh, how they've been put together. We have a range of different experiences that not just share some of the best practices in the industry, but that also change over to this event space where they host industry insiders to come together and to co-create new approaches for the entire industry around sustainable practices. And then for the individual visitor, you leave with your good fashion action plan. This is essentially a space that invites you and that defines for you what it is that you would do and that you said that you would do to become a more sustainable consumer. We follow up with visitors and had incredible feedback. This is actually, these stats are a full year old but we had over 92% of visitors said they would change their behavior, huge amount of follow followers on social media, and most importantly, the co-locators. So this is other industry partners who have signed on to use sustainable fashion as a way to change the industry from the inside out. So it's essentially a way to catalyze between consumers, industry insiders, and designers, whether it's Stella McCartney, Nike, or Adidas, or smaller purveyors, all together gathering to make a transformation in our industry. With that, we have one last question, I think, in terms of the behaviors. This is very similar to the types of questions that you would be asked inside of our experience. So which of these new behaviors would be most willing to adopt for three months? And then this is obviously where the poll goes into place, but wash your clothes with only cold water. Number two, wear everything in your wardrobe before you buy something new. And number three, always read the labels for sustainability best practices. And with that, I'll hand it back over. Uh, and thank you so much for your time and attention. Really looking forward to your response uh, and all of your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Jake, for that presentation. Uh, I just want to pull up and see the results to the poll question that you asked. OK, there. Um, I, I can't see it here on the screen. So I think I'm reading, okay. always read the labels for sustainability practices, topped it out. Yeah. Which makes perfect sense. Washing your clothes with only cold water, a distant second at a third, which is not a huge surprise. But wearing everything in your wardrobe before buying something new is, is surprisingly hitting 50%. I think especially with the audience, that's saying a lot. And I think that's a great way for people to, again, reconsidering their consumption patterns. Exactly. Well, thank you, Jake, for that engaging trip through some of the most interesting, immersive experiences uh, in the world. And I'm sure there's lots that our community could understand and take away from that. So thanks so much. Thank you so much, Emma. I really appreciate your attention time. Great.